the first session. Um, so uh, we have the next session uh, about the Pi CSW project status. And ah, both gentlemen are here, uh, Angelos Tsotsos and Tom Kralidis. Yeah, I already introduced you in the first talk, but some people may have switched. So I'll, I'll, I'll go quickly. So Angelos um, is a remote uh, sensing researcher, software developer at uh, National Technical University of Athens and OSGEO president. So ask him anything about OSGEO if you meet him. He's OGC member, contributor to various projects, um, and also Ubuntu GIS maintainer. And then we have Tom here um, from Canada, and he's a senior systems scientist for the Meteorological Service of Canada. And Tom is very active in uh, various uh, organizations like the OGC, um, OSGO as well, serving on the board. Uh, but last but not least, various open source geospatial projects implementing uh, international standards like PyCSW, what you will hear about, and PyGeoAPI, API, uh, Map Server GeoNodes, QGIS, PyWPS, OESLib. Um, uh, too, too, too many to mention. Um, uh, I think, uh, yeah, well, I give the floor to you and. Uh, you even have hosting rights. So you, I, I saw a screen popping up for sharing. Yes, but I'm, uh, yeah, I'm going to share again. I'm not sure if you. Yeah, yeah, see. I'll, uh, yeah. oh yeah, you, you share it yourself. So that's, right. that's, uh, that's good. And mm -hmm. I leave the, the floor to you and uh, bring us up to date with the Pisces W project status. Thank you. Thank you very much. So. Hello, everyone. Uh, we are happy to be here and we are going to present the project status for Pi CSW, the project status for this year. Uh, and uh, we are going to start right away. Uh, the outline of the presentation, we are going to make an introduction and then we are going to discuss about the features of Pi CSW, what is new in the latest stable version of Pi CSW, then uh, we are going to discuss architecture, installation, uh, downstream projects, and roadmap. So let's get started with the introduction. So Pi CSW, for those of you who don't know it, it's, it's an uh, initially it was an OGC CSW server implementation in Python, but recently we added that we implement OGC API records as well. It's an open source project released under the MIT license, and it runs on all ma major platforms. It's it's Python and it, it works everywhere. Uh, it has been an OSGEO project since 2015. Uh, so PySysW fully implements the OpenGIS catalog ser service implementation specification, or, uh, as well as known catalog service for the web. Uh, we are now also implementing OGC API records. We are implementing open search, uh, and, uh, as long as, uh, as many other uh, standards that, for catalogs out there. Uh, PyCSW basically allows you for publishing and discovery of ge geospatial metadata. So if you have data and you want to publish them online, you, you create metadata and then you, you, you give the metadata to the PyCSW to, to serve using all these uh, standards and specifications. Uh, the, the project has been certified as a OGC compliant and it, it has been an OGC reference implementation for both CSW 2.0.2 and uh, version 3 recently. Uh, it's an official OSGO project for some years now uh, and, it, and we are current, uh, consi constantly trying to implement what is new uh, in, in OGC standards. Uh, regarding catalog. So a bit of a history for the project. Tom started the project in 2010. He was alone for a year uh, coding <laughs> and then he he announced the project on, on 2011. It's been 10 years now. Uh, then I joined him and we started working on the first uh, official release 0 0.1 passing all the side tests for OGC uh, CSW. Uh, then shortly after we released version one, we included the, 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 the software in OSGO Live, and then we we moved on. Uh, we powered data.gov at some point. 
Uh, we graduated the incubation in 2015. And then we did a reference implementation of OGC CSW3. Um, last December, we had the 10th birthday. And shortly after, we released the, sta the latest stable version 2.6. Tom is going to talk about it in a while, what, what is new in there. Uh, the recent development is that we landed the support for the CPI records and, and stack uh, this July. So it's we have new things in master that are not yet uh, released uh, in, in a stable version. Uh, the goals of the project, we want to have a lightweight and easy to use setup. It's a standalone catalog. It doesn't have a UI. Well, it didn't have a UI until now that we have a DC API record. Uh, there's no metadata entity in front end, but it is designed as a microservice. It, it's, it's, it serves the use case of exposing ready-to-go metadata. Uh, if you have files or an existing database, database and you can uh, serve this through a CSW interface. It's very extensible. It's easy to add metadata formats, mappings, and it's, it's, it has a very, uh, very um, easy to extend architecture. It, it is always OGC compliant. We make sure that uh, we always pass the side tests and it's always uh, passing the side tests uh, on, on a daily basis. So a, a bit of uh, discussion about the features. As I already said, we implement fully and we are the reference implementation for CSW, all recent versions. We support harvesting for WMS, WFS, WCS, and many other uh, OGC standards. We, uh, we implement the ISO uh, application profile and uh, the FGDC, CSD, GM application profile as well as open search, geo time, and recently EO extensions, the Earth Observations extensions for uh, OGC open search. Uh, OGC API records core, we are develop we, we implement that, but it's still in development. The standard is not officially out yet. We are implementing the current stack API, which is bet version be uh, one beta two and various other uh, standards uh, like uh, Dublin Core, DIF, uh, Atom, uh, and many more. We also support transactional capability, so you can do transactions with a, with a catalog. And we have a flexible repository configuration. It works with SQLite, Postgres, PostGIS, MySQL, anything that can plug into uh, SQL Alchemy or if, even to Django in, in some cases, uh, like GeoNode. Uh, it supports federated catalog distributed searching, so you can make a, a network of PyCSW or you can plug it in and harvest from other catalogs and it will work. Uh, it's very simple to configure. It has an extensible plugin architecture. You can create your own plugins uh, or add new backends to it. Uh, it can work. It can integrate because it's a basically a library, so it can integrate with Python environments. For example, GeoNode uses PyCSW as the as the as the catalog component, uh, along with some other projects. It, it has been integrated with Sican in in, in, the, in the past, and we have many more features like we implement full text search and 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 uh, we can we have real time XML validation. Uh, this is a list of standards that we currently support. Um, I, I won't go through all of them, but it's it's all about metadata, and uh, and and you know metadata can be can have too many standards, but yeah, here we are. So I'm going to hand it over to Tom to talk to talk about the new uh, their latest PyCSW, Tom. Great, thanks, Angelos. Um, maybe can we just uh, arrow over? horizontally to the next slide. Excellent. And then next slide. Down. Oops, so what's, oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, one more down. OK, so what's new in, uh, in version 2.6? Sorry, I had some uh, network connection issue. but. Uh, Version version 2.6, what have we done? We've added support for open search geo and time enhancements. So that includes uh, the, the way we've done temporal support in PyC7 in the past has always been on a single date time, but now we're supporting a, a temporal envelope. So if you're looking for a metadata record with a time extent, the temporal boundary that's now supported in the uh, in the open search geo and time uh, uh, way, 
Next slide. We also support um, 12 factors. So things like environment variables in the, in the configuration. So uh, if you have a, let's say a Docker setup or, or a Docker Compose setup or some, some uh, cloud capability, you're able to set any PyCSW configuration variable, configuration value as an environment variable. And that will uh, that will make its way through, and that's really great when you're working in environments where there's you know a lot of different uh, servers and nodes and uh, and so on and so forth. So it's uh, it's flexible that way. We've also added uh, Kubernetes support as well as uh, Helm charts, and we finally removed support for Python two. So if you are using uh, um, uh, Python uh, PyCSW two point six Python two support is uh, is officially removed. It was always it was deprecated for a while and we turned off all of our ci testing for python 2 but uh, we finally removed it in 2.6 next slide that's what's happening in 2.6 what's going on in our development branch so we're working on uh, supporting the ogc open search earth observation um, extension so those are uh, specific uh, open search parameters uh, such as cloud cover and so on um, platforms and, uh, and instruments to support to support the EO profile. We've done an early implementation of OGC API records part one, which is uh, the core. And as Angelo uh, may, may have mentioned, uh, both Angelos and I are on the OGC API standards working group, records standards working group. So with that, we've done the implementation in uh, in PyCSW. We've also done an early implementation of, uh, of Stack API for uh, for for discovering uh, for discovering items. And with all that, we added an extra, an additional WSGI endpoint using uh, using Flask. The way PyCSW was working before um, these improvements was through a single WSGI with a single endpoint, which was the sort of the CSW way, where you have a query string um, uh, taking on most of the work. But uh, with with the new approaches, we implemented a, a, the endpoint using Flask with uh, Flask routes, which map back to um, which work with the existing functionality. So that was a nice, uh, a nice enhancement to put on top of our existing functionality to make it work with the new generation of standards. Next slide. In terms of architecture, um, we, as, as Angelos mentioned, I mean, it's, it, it's a microservice, it's a microservice architecture, and uh, it, it, it's quite modular. So the, the, the sole goal of PyCSW is to serve, uh, is to, you know, metadata management, whether you wanted to harvest metadata into PyCSW or add push metadata into uh, PyCSW and make that same metadata available to downstream clients or applications. So the downstream clients and applications include desktop GISs like QGIS, um, uh, client libraries like OWS lib, or, you know, web applications like, uh, like, like GeoNode. And um, on the other side of that, we have a plugin mechanism that allows you to support one to many different metadata formats. Uh, the one, the the ones that you see there are specific to what we have on board in PyCSW, but you can make your own external plugins for, you know, metadata that that uh, that you may not see there, which is important to your organization or your project. Next slide. And there's another example. Uh, we also support a number of different backends, so we use SQL Alchemy for. Uh, for our, for our database uh, abstraction. So you can abstract databases and we're also working on support of abstracting backends so we can start supporting in NoSQL backends. There is some loose support for uh, for Elasticsearch and I've seen other other projects implement that. Um, we, uh, we're, we're, we're gonna put that into PyCSW core, but, uh, but the capability does exist. We've abstracted things enough so that we can support both NoSQL and a wide range of RDBMSs through uh, through SQL Alchemy. Next slide, Angelos. All right, thank you, Tom. So uh, let's see how easy it is to install PyCSW. So it's it's really simple because it's already in PyPy. So if if you do a, a pip install PyCSW, you will get PyCSW as a library. Uh, there's a there's a there's it's already included for many years now in Debian, so it's it's in an, in the non-free area due to the OGC schema licensing, but the the, the actual package is, is completely open source and free. Uh, it, it through Debian it, it became uh, available upstream in Ubuntu and also in OpenSUSE, so many distributions now have PyCW upstream. 
It's available for, for Windows uh, in, in the map server for Windows packaging. And the source code is al already available on GitHub. Uh, it's really easy to install. All you have, it's a four minute install. And we, believe me, you, we have already uh, timed it. this. It's really four minutes to, to install it and, and run it locally. And it's even more easy nowadays with, with Docker. Um, if you have OSGO Live, you already have it in there. So it's available since version 5.5. And it's already in the latest uh, uh, in the latest stable version. So if you have OSGO Live, you can, you can run PyCSW directly there. There's an overview and a quick start tutorial if you're interested. But recently, we have all, all also <clears throat> do, we are also doing packaging in Docker. So it's already available in Docker Hub. You can just do a Docker pull, uh, the latest version of PyCSW or an, any other release version. And it's then it's less than four minutes actually to set it up. Uh, we added recently uh, some sample Kubernetes configuration. It's available on our GitHub uh, repo. And we have a Helm chart. So if you are r creating your own architecture and you want to, to use PyCSW in that architecture, you have all the tools to actually uh, set up a microservice in Kubernetes and or maybe in Docker uh, Swarm or whatever else you're using. It's really easy to to set up and, and very convenient. Uh, let's see a bit about recent projects and deployments. Uh, so uh, recently we have been working on an ESA project, the uh, ESA's Earth Observation Exploitation Platform and Common Architecture. It's called EOEPCA. Uh, it's an exploitation platform. ESA is funding this project. It's a collaborative uh, virtual work environment providing access to Earth observation data, algorithms, tools, and ICT resources. Uh, the goal there is to define a reusable exploitation platform architecture using oper open interfaces, but basically it's also doing this through open source software. If you go to eoepca.org, you will see that the architecture is 100% is, is open source. It's on GitHub. Uh, PyCSW is the, the resource catalog of, uh, component of this architecture, and, and we are building uh, the, uh, more features to PyCSW as, as requested by ESA in order to, to accommodate the, the needs of this uh, common architecture. We are hoping that you know, the, the, the next generation of, of Earth observation platforms in Europe will, will have PyCSW as a catalog. Back to Tom. Thanks, Angelos. Um... Another, a few more example projects. So one is from the Norwegian Meteorological Institute, um, who've been uh, extensively using the project for a number of different metadata records, metadata management uh, in, in support of their um, projects with, uh, with the World Meteorological Organization, as well as Norwegian Marine Data Center. So they have a number of different projects which are, uh, which are using PyCSW to, to manage uh, mostly ISO metadata from, uh, from, from, from what I've seen. But um, they they also have a heavy use of PyCSW in in a cloud environment. So kudos for, to uh, Norwegian Meteorological Institute for um, you know bug reports and adding feature enhancements and so on. Next slide. They have some ongoing work around working on uh, output profiles, and uh, they do con uh, continuous deployment again uh, through uh, through Kubernetes and cloud mechanisms. Next slide. Next slide. Uh, in, my, in my organization, we're working on the, something with the WMO as part of the WMO information system. So we're migrating our existing data collection and production center catalog into a PyCSW instance, which basically will provide uh, the WMO core metadata profile, which is, an, which is a profile of ISO 19115. And that basically provides a discovery and search for weather, climate, and water data for uh, um, of WMO member data. So that's, that's using uh, PyCSW as well. Next slide. And uh, roadmap. So where where are we going? We've uh, we've done quite a bit, uh, some a lot of focus on Earth observation, as well as the uh, the recent standards. But we want to continue on the uh, uh, on the OGC API records um, um, trail to make sure that that's implemented and implemented properly. Our goal is to become a reference implementation, just like we are for CSW. We are going to add support for Common Query Language or, or CQL both uh, as text and as a JSON uh, HTTP post payload. So that's, uh, that, that's in scope. Next slide. Stack, we're uh, you know, extending our stack support and seeing how some of the uh, mechanisms around stack will be, uh, will be ratified, particularly around query and filters. I think there's some, 
there's some uh, uh, convergence between Stack and, uh, and OGC API in terms of uh, query languages. So we're waiting to see how that bottoms out and we continue to test against PyStack Client, which is a great tool for, for testing the specification. Next slide. Coming soon, deeper JSON meta metadata management. So we mentioned Stack and OGC API records. JSON is a first class is one of the first class outputs that we provide on on output when people ask for metadata or query uh, and we search and present metadata. But we also want to uh, support ingest of these new JSON based metadata standards. So you can harvest a Stack API into PyCSW. You can harvest another OGC API records endpoint into PyCSW. So we want to. Uh, I mean that that's a critical path. Uh, we've traditionally done only XML. But uh, at this point, we're, we're extending that onto JSON. And while we're at it, we will probably abstract that enough so that the underlying uh, support can be for any uh, encoding. So we can future proof that a little bit more. But uh, we'll start with, with, uh, with JSON as the, first, uh, as the first example. Deeper EO support. So doing uh, queries and, and uh, around uh, more uh, EO sort of queryables and facets, as well as uh, granularity. It's a, that's a, that's a big piece of work around uh, doing cataloging for Earth observation, but uh, that, that's in scope. PyGeoFilter integration. So PyGeoFilter is a new project that uh, that is an abstraction. It's a Python library that is an abstraction around all the various OGC, filter, common query language uh, type uh, specifications. And it will allow your Python project to basically um, you know, use PyGeoFilter to parse a filter, put that in an abstract syntax tree, and then bind that to your backend, whether you have a relational database or Elasticsearch or something else. So we want to integrate with PyGeoFilter. Yeah, well, I think that what that'll do for the PyCSW project is we'll be able to rip out all the custom code that we've done for, for filters over the years, which, which work well, but uh, we want to merge our efforts with PyGeoFilter to put the, the focus on that capability from, uh, from, from that project. And we work closely with uh, the PyGeoFilter folks and PyGeoFilter is another GeoPython project. So I encourage folks to take a look at that. Uh, and finally, our PyCSW admin.py tool um, will be updated to use uh, CLI tooling and an updated sort of CLI interface using, uh, using Python click. So look forward to that one. Um, future releases, uh, so the in three, by cutting PyCSW 3.0, that will be sort of our long-term release supporting CSW 2 and 3 over time. So that will be bound for, CS, uh, for CSW 2 and 3. PyCSW 4 will probably properly support um, will, uh, and, and may provide some breaking changes on, on only support, supporting OGC API records, uh, which used to be called Catalog 4, but it's now called uh, OGC API records. And um, we continue to you know, e evolve and work together with the PyGeo API project, which Angelos and I and others work on to uh, to articulate the, 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 you know, what the relationship is be between those. I think there is a, a small uh, uh, metadata capability in PyGeo API, but in PyCSW, we have the more full-featured full capability to do actual metadata management. And that continues to be the goal of the project and provide these APIs just the same. Next slide. Community, uh, getting involved. So we're an open community. We have uh, you know, mailing lists, Gitter channels. Uh, we're on GitHub. There's uh, professional support if uh, folks are interested. Next slide. And that is it. So I would like to thank, uh, thank everybody and we'll take any questions or comments. Angelos, I'm, I think you have a demo up there on the screen now. Yeah, I just wanted to show, if we have one minute, what is the landing page of PyCSW, and this is what is now on PyCSW3, which is in master branch. So you have the endpoints listed here. You, you have the, the CSW3 here, the CSW version 2 here, and this is the, the, the landing page for OGC API records. So this is the JSON representation of that. And if you go to collections and you go to items, you can see the actual records on the, on the on the on the on, on a simple UI. So, yeah, we didn't mean to have a UI, but OGC API records now uh, has HTTP as default. So, uh, so, yeah, so we are we are now in this situation where we support all these uh, features, and this is the the new phase of PyCSW three. That's it. <laughs>
Okay, thanks, uh, Angelos and Tom, bringing us up to date on Pi CSW. In the meantime, we got some interesting questions. Can you guess what the first question is? It's very similar as the question we got for um, Pi G API. So I read it. How do you compare use cases of Pi CSW to GU Network? That was the most upvoted question. So I start with that one. Okay, uh, maybe I'll take a shot. So um, in my opinion, other than the fact that they're written in different programming languages, but uh, for use cases, I would say the Pi CSW use case is more the, uh, the composable or headless use case so that you can build it into your own, uh, you know, Python, uh, Python pipelines or other microservice based uh, uh, pipelines. I, I know GeoNetwork has a full, fully blown metadata editor, which is very powerful. Um, that that was never the scope of PyCSW. So the assumption in PyCSW is, you know, uh, somewhere along the line, you are composing your metadata, whether it's sort of at your desk or whether it's through some sort of pipeline, and then that feeds its way through uh, PyCSW. So PyCSW puts your metadata on the shelf, um, assuming that you've created that through some through some upstream process. I think we should compare GeoNetwork more to GeoNode, which is the next talk from Alessio. Uh, and and PyCSW works as a, as the catalog component there. So if you have if you want a full UI with everything bundled in, I think GeoNode is is what you're looking for in in Python uh, in in the in the Python world. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And there's. Another question, I read it. Can you provide an example of what we pronounce it whiskey is good for WSGI? And maybe that's more a sort of generic Python question or? Yeah, I think uh, it's it's basically a convention for connecting to uh, web applications or frameworks written in, uh, in Python. So, um, <laughs> At least that's well, probably uh, maybe the, the the questioner has is hinting at uh, sort of the follow up, uh, which we are actually using, I think, with by GWAPI, which is called ASCII, the asynchronous um, things like Starlet, and uh, probably the question is maybe are, are you planning support for because by CSW is it Flask based? We, we, the, the new work is uh, based on Flask, and Flask 2.0 supports async just the same, so sure. Oh, okay. So, um, let's see. Oh, yeah, there's a longer question. I don't... Uh, it's about, uh, can you test the quality of metadata, developed infrastructure harvesting different CSWs, but want to test our metadata quality to inspire? Um, we I think uh, oh, I, I can I can talk to that one directly because I actually do that uh, in, in, okay. in a few of our in a few of our projects. So I mentioned a project that we're doing for the WMO here in Canada and uh, we do quality assessment of, uh, of our metadata, but that is done upstream of PyCSW. So imagine we have a pipeline where we create uh, metadata and the metadata is uh, sent along to a quality assessment uh, utility that is totally outside of PyCSW. And then once once it's deemed that it's ready to be published and it meets the quality uh, assessment criteria, then it's uh, it's fed through PyCSW. So I would um, I would see that as a as sort of an upstream workflow. I'm not sure if Angelos has any comments or I just want to add that you know it's it's possible to to do validation when you do harvesting and uh, it's possible to to validate metadata given uh, if you if you have a uh, an XLD to test against so uh, lib XML is part of what we are using and LXML the Python uh, library is there so it's possible for somebody to actually implement that um, yeah mm -hmm. Is that maybe also a role for GU Health Check here, or well, sure. validation is maybe not. Sure, I mean, that, maybe. that will be in a talk tomorrow, and mm -hmm. um, well, we'll uh, we're just in time here, and uh, our next uh, speaker is uh, is waiting backstage, and uh, 
thanks again, Tom and Shalos, um, and also for your work on Pi CSW and many of the other GeoPython projects. And uh, we'll see you uh, along. Thank you very much.